Hello, Laura. Nice to have you here for this interview on this uh, International Women's Day. Hello, Guillaume. Thank you very much for inviting me. You're welcome. And uh, today we'll be discussing a bit about your entrepreneurial path and experience as a female founder in the Swiss startup ecosystem. Allow me first to introduce you quickly to our audience. You are graduated of Master of Science in Environmental Engineering at EPFL, worked as an expert at EAVAC, the Swiss Federal Institute of Aquatic Science and Technology, where your focus was on water and sanitation in low and middle income countries. In beginning 2023, you co-founded Openversum, a startup bringing safe and clean water where it's most needed. You operate there as a CMO. Can you let us know a bit more about the problem you're solving and what Openversum ex exactly does? Very happy. So Openversum is a social business and we're on a mission to making safe water technologies accessible to everyone. Because right now we still have actually way more than 2 billion people on this planet who do not have access to safe drinking water, which is extremely dangerous to, to health and leads to many deaths uh, every, every year. But the thing is that we have a lot of technologies that exist to make water clean, yet we've been failing at kind of translating these technologies and implementing them sustainably where they're actually needed. So our solution to this was to not only design our own technology, which is a drinking water filter that we equip with a membrane, but then distribute it differently through what we say is micro-franchising. So concretely, it means that what we do is that we empower women entrepreneurs with tools and know-how so they can assemble, sell, and maintain these filters. So they're becoming the local expert in place that's generating revenue while providing safe drinking water sustainably to their communities. That's a great project we, we need for the world. And indeed, uh, you not only bring the technology, but you also uh, bring more skills locally. So congratulations, it's a very uh, nice project. Um, recently, you won the, the public voting at the Swiss Indian Entrepreneurship Day during the AIT Swiss Indian Camp organized by Venture Lab. So congratulations uh, for this. Can you um, share with us some other key moments in your entrepreneurial journey that have contributed to the success of your startup? Definitely. I think it, it's always hard to pick key moments uh, because there's just so much that's always happening, you know, in a especially in early stage startups, but one that I can think of that actually also links a little bit to this AIT India program is when we got um, nominated as top innovators by Uplink, because they had an initiative. So Uplink is kind of a branch of the world economy. And they had an initiative all about empowering aquapreneurs. So we are entrepreneurs on a mission to make the SDG 6 of uh, water access a reality for all and mm -hmm. they, this was a joint initiative with HCL Tech which is one of the biggest Indian uh, Indian tech firms and through this we got not only a financial I mean a grant that allowed us to set up our local team in Colombia and to hire fantastic people there but also it connected us to a fantastic network of uh, water entrepreneurs of water investors we got to go to the UN water conference in New York and this is a very empowering frameworks that, that that kind of gives us that that stamp of approval that means that we have the right traction to then go to, to talk to investors to fellow entrepreneurs that are much more advanced and actually yeah unlock a lot more of opportunities this uh sound like a dream bus because from a uh small events you get to really be invited in the biggest institution of the world uh, on your topic uh, the, the water and uh, this is uh, about the, the the entrepreneur and startup ecosystem that is evolving uh, rapidly even your own example is a is a, a fast growing uh, path um, with increasing recognition of the role of women play how do you perceive the impact of your leadership in this uh, ecosystem I think, you know, I, I was never planning, I didn't plan on, on doing any type of, of leadership, you know, in my mind, first I was an engineer and I knew I wanted to make the world better with water, but I didn't necessarily think of that whole aspect of of leadership in, 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 in business. But mm -hmm. when you look at water itself already, water access, it's a problem that disproportionately affects women and girls globally. So actually advocating for safe water access is already advocating for gender equality. But then on the Swiss scene, I've definitely noticed huge changes over the short two years I've been I've been doing this. 
in that at the start, you know, you it was a bit difficult to gain the trust and to build confidence in sometimes quite conservative uh, environments. But now more and more, I see a lot of events where you have mostly women panelists. I'm invited a lot to speak up on, on, on panels about the role of women in business, the role of women in entrepreneurship. And a big thing for me that is important in, in such actually kind of leadership is to not only share success stories, but share failures. Because no one is perfect, but I think as women, we tend to think that uh, if we're not the most expert of the expert, we shouldn't talk there. And if we don't tick every box, we shouldn't try. But expressing mistakes and talking about the past to get to where we are, I think is something that can actually make other women feel empowered to kind of speak up, maybe make mistakes, but kind of showcase it as, look, that means that shows that I have experience, that shows that I'm learning and that shows that I have the capacities to build upon what I've done before. It makes me think about the saying that you have to try nine times and your success on the tenth one when you are in the entrepreneurial uh, path. But we know it's also about um, gaining confidence, trying it, even if it fails, you try it another time and it will work out. So definitely sharing these uh, failures is important so that others can gain confidence. And you need confidence when you need to convince uh, investors for sure. So can you let's talk about a bit about fundraising and mm -hmm. raising funds is, is often seated as a, a significant challenge for startups. What advice would you give to other aspiring female entrepreneurs who are approaching the fundraising uh, stage? Mm -hmm. I think uh, before anything, just be clear on what, what you want, what's your mission, what are your values and what you're here to offer. And for what, you know, don't, don't go around thinking, oh, okay, I need about this amount of money, but I could go a bit lower, but we could go a bit higher. Just be clear also on what you want and what you will not let go. Also in terms of, of, of values, I think it's very important to find investors that actually align with what you want to achieve, you know, especially, for example, in the field of social impact. We don't necessarily have the same interest as a, a typical venture capital. So that's something that you have to spend time to understand and define. And another point would be to start building your relationships with investors early. You know, reach out, try to understand already what are they looking for, at which stage do they invest. They might not be the fit for you now, but they might be later. And anyways, to fundraise right now, you need six months to 12 months. So mm -hmm. just keep them informed, tell them, look, I've achieved this and this and this. Should we talk again? Just keep them in the loop. Yeah, building relation, networking, being at the yeah. good uh, place at the good moment uh, is never so so easy. But uh, according to you, um, what role does mentorship play in supporting women entrepreneurs, and how has it impacted your growth as a, as a leader? Mm -hmm. I think mentorship is my mentors. I, I see them as. Uh, enablers in a way I, I, on one side they can connect me to the right people at the right time because they've gone through similar issues similar challenges but no one is expert at, at, at everything but having them on board means i have access to then their network that they've built over the years that i know i can trust you know this that kind of due diligence was done by someone i trust mm -hmm. and on the other side they just actually help you build confidence because they share their own mistakes, their own learnings. And basically, I think for me, they were just really humanizing my entrepreneurship journey, which felt really good because we tend to get into numbers, uh, KPIs, we have to achieve this, this, this. And sometimes we tend to forget how to enjoy the journey. And my mentors have definitely taught me how, how to do that. Yes, stop thinking you're alone and there are many experts who can help you too. See it differently from another point of view. That's very interesting. So we're coming to the end of this interview already. Uh, thank you very much, Laura, for sharing this uh, expertise and experience with us um, on this uh, International Women Day. How would you, uh, in a word, sum up uh, your, your key advice to all the women watching us who want to jump in entrepreneurship? Yeah, definitely. I would say embrace diversity and harness it as a strength to evolve, not only as an individual, but as an entrepreneur. 
That's great advice. Thank you very much, Laura, and uh, good luck uh, for the future of Openversum. We're waiting on your uh, next news, and uh, I wish you a, a very good end of the day. Bye Thank bye, you very Laura. much, Guillaume. It was a pleasure. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.